Greetings folks, this video is going to be a bit of an information catch up, answering a few questions and showing some uh, bits and pieces that I've received. Uh, I had a viewer request, Michael Jarko asked if I could update the uh, my little FPV pod that I showed a couple of years ago because the links had expired so I'll uh, explain what sort of bits and pieces I'm using now from a little pod. They haven't really changed a lot actually. Uh, also a bit of FPV gear, uh, which antennas I'm using, a few different options, and something to do with uh, access ACCST uh, and versions 1 and 2, and which radios can uh, operate which. Oh, I've got some 7-inch folding props to look at too. Alright, so let's get into it. So my little FPV pod is, is like a little uh, backpack that can be swapped from camera uh, from plane to plane. Just a simple little set up for, not for long range, just for decent quality, easy uh, easy to mount FPV on any plane pretty much. It's just some PVC plastic made from a, a down, down pipe you can buy from a hardware shop. Heat it up, bend it to shape, cut it to shape. Just mount a camera on there and a little video transmitter and then tape that on the plane somehow. And then I just connect these two wires. If you refer back to the video that I've uh, linked in the description, you'll see how I solder all of that up. So the bits and pieces that I use are for the video transmitter and for the antenna are pretty much the same as I've always used. So there's the TS5823L, just a 40 channel, 200 milliwatt, simple video transmitter with a push button and one LED there for easy setup. Change the channel if you're clashing with one of your flying buddies. So that's pretty much all I use for video transmitters, apart from a long range uh, setup on the range of 1600, which is an AKK, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but that goes up to 1600 milliwatts for long range. But my basic simple recommendation is just one of these uh, simple little AMA, if they still make them, I don't know if they're still around. I'll uh, put a link in if they are, or an alternative. Antenna, this is uh, my most commonly used antenna. It's the little AMA short antenna. Uh, I have just recently got some uh, micro lollipops from Fox here to try out. So they're great little antennas, uh, less drag for, not for long range of course, just for sort of proximity flying. I doubt the range would be all that much different. Although these little AMAs are some of the best antennas around, best uh, omnidirectional antennas anyway, I'll find. But these Foxia lollipops, micro lollipops, come with RP, SMA, SMA, MMCX, and UFL connectors, so all the different connectors. Uh, and the Aomway ones come with uh, SMA and RP, SMA, whatever you want. You can also get these Pagoda style ones too. What are these? GEPRC. Uh, they're nice and uh, sturdy, I guess, uh, less prone to damage. I don't think the range of these is quite as good as the Aomway. Uh, circularly polarized though. Very hard to test antenna range, I find. You never get a definitive answer. All right, so that's video transmitters and antennas. Cameras, um, so cameras come and go. Probably still one of my favorites is the Runcam Eagle 2 Pro. Here it is set up on my head tracking sort of pan and tilt setup there. Uh, magnificent color, wide dynamic range, uh, just really great quality. This was the original one that I had on the little pod, uh, Caddx Super something or other. Uh, but what I like recently is this uh, Runcam Phoenix 2. This little camera, Micro Phoenix 2 it's called, not the Oscar version, just the Phoenix 2 has, it has one of the best image qualities that I've ever seen on an FPV camera. Really, really pleasing image in the in the goggles. Doesn't have an on-screen display of voltage, but you don't need that if you're using a flight control board. Uh, 6943 swappable. Probably my favourite, less expensive camera now, the Runcam Phoenix 2. Really worth checking out. But these days, just about in, any camera on the market is going to do a good job. Sp certainly any of the Runcams, Caddxes and... Uh, Fox ears. Uh, I tend to go for 16-9 aspect ratio and I usually get the ones with the on-screen display just in case I'm not using a flight control board. You still want to be able to see your uh, LiPo voltage. 
but uh, because I'm flying fixed wing, I like the wide 16-9 aspect ratio and uh, good wide dynamic range is important too. As for the split cameras, if you want to actually get some HD recording as well, um, I've had quite a few split cameras and I find them to be very delicate and they all seem to pack up and stop working after a little while. This one, the Runcam Split Mini, is still going okay. Uh, my Runcam Hybrid stopped working. My Foxy 4K Split stopped working. Um, I do have a Cadex Tarsia, which is still working and working very nicely. So, to be honest, the Cadex Tarsia is the only one of the 4K ones uh, of mine that is still working. So, <laughs> uh, that might be my re recommendation for a 4K. The trouble is with 4K splits, you do get uh, jelly video if there's any vibrations at all it uh, shows up on the 4k splits a lot worse than any others now what else can i show you I, as i said i have a few little things to try out this is the the dalprop seven inch folding prop and uh, in the bag you get uh, all four props for a quad two clockwise and two counterclockwise and it's like a jigsaw puzzle you have to put it all together um, so I'll be testing this on a wing or something like that to see how it handles landing with a folding prop that doesn't fold backwards, it folds sort of sideways. So that'll be fun, that's coming up in the future. Another interesting little piece of kit I have is the Vifly Short Stopper, which is, a, which is like an electronic fuse, I guess. It has XT60 and XT30 plugs, which is very good. It has a little switch there and LEDs, uh, a red and green LED somewhere. Uh, and if I just have a look at the instruction manual. So if you're soldering up a flight control board and you're not too sure about your soldering, then you can plug in via this and it will uh, stop any shorts. You can set it to a 1 amp current threshold or a 2 amp current threshold. I guess that's with the little switch there. And the trip time, the default setting for short circuit is 3 milliseconds and for overcurrent is 10 milliseconds. You can set longer times by uh, shorting two solder pads on the board if you want to. So if you connect it up and the green light stays on, your build is normal. If the green light is off and the red light is on, it means there's a, a short circuit or overcurrent. And there's also a blue light. If the blue light is on, uh, I think that means you've changed you've changed to the 2 amp current threshold. So a very nice little piece of kit and it costs about $12 US. So that's a worthwhile little piece of electronics, I think. Let's look at uh, FPV goggles. These are my goggles, the Aomai, Aomai uh, V1 version 2, I think they are. I just have a a on my circularly polarized on one side and a patch on the other side. I, after listening to one of the INAV fixed wing group um, chats, I saw that Mark Hoffman was recommending one of these uh, triple feed patches instead of the this little A on my patch. And uh, yes, it does give much clearer view at the extent of the range, longer range than this one. It also comes with. Uh, right hand circularly polarized and left hand circularly polarized too. So if you have a lot of people around you interfering with you on right hand circularly polarized, you can swap over to left hand as long as you have a left hand antenna on your plane. It's very good, although it is kind of big and awkward. So um, I tend to just use that when I'm wanting to go longer range. Uh, for my normal bashing around, just quick testing, I just leave that on there and that's absolutely fine for, you know, up to kilometer two kilometers or so if you want to go further this one does the job next up i'll talk about these three radios and accst and access protocols alexander van sass was asking me what i was thinking about the uh, tx16s radio after using it for a month um, i find i'm actually using my tyrannus qx7 still because i have a i have about 50 models on there and i haven't transferred them over to the tx16s yet uh, i am using the uh, access enabled uh, x9 light just because uh, i got a receiver from fr sky that it, um, i wanted to try out on access that means i can try out the access the accst 2.1 now why haven't I, haven't i converted totally to the tx16s uh, i will eventually when this one um, retires I'm probably just go all over to the TX16S uh, 
I find it is a bit heavier than the QX7 and uh, that's kind of a bit of a problem when I'm doing hand launches, just the way I hold the radio. I'm kind of going to have to teach myself to hold the radio in a different way, um, but it's no big drama. It's still a great radio. I haven't tested range, haven't done a range comparison yet. I haven't really used these six buttons up here as well. Um, the problem is you would have to actually take your eyes off the model and look at the button you're, you're pushing uh, to activate them so I much prefer just to use the switches without having to look at them. I still much prefer this rotary selector here. I just love the way that works and these buttons. I prefer that to these style of buttons and, and roller. I don't need the big color screen. I'm quite happy with the small monochrome screen. Um, simple works well for me but I will eventually swap over to the TX16S. ACCST version 2. So this receiver has is flashed to ACCST version 2 and it works on this radio here and it doesn't work on this radio here. Let's just verify that. So we have internal model XJT D16. It's the only choice which is version 1. Let's uh, bind him up. And you can see we can't bind it. No, doesn't like it. Not bound. What about the TX16S? Remembering we have ACCST two, version 2 on here. And internal module, we've got the multi-module there. And we have this one called FRSky X2. Bind. And... That works. FRSky X2 is ACC ST version 2. So you can upgrade to version 2. You can buy new uh, receivers as long as you flash them to ACC ST version 2. And you can operate them using the TX16S. And finally, I want to talk about iNav Rover, uh, which has become available with iNav version 2.5. I've been loving playing with it. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of a nice change not to have to launch a plane and uh, keep an eye on it and keep flying it. This little rover basically drives itself around according to your entered waypoint mission. There are a few things I found out about rover. If you want your rover to stop at the end, uh, you need to tick return to home and land on the in the uh, what is it the mission control. If you don't do that, it will slowly, very slowly, sort of wander around the, the last point or the return to home point. When you're entering waypoints, you don't need to enter a waypoint speed. Waypoint speed is ignored by fixed wing and rovers. That's only used for quads, so don't worry about that. It uses the cruise throttle that you've set up in the configurator. So make sure you have your cruise throttle set where you want it to be. And also in the mission control section, uh, you, you kind of just get the drawn maps. You don't get the satellite view. You can get the satellite view if you choose Bing Maps. You will need to go into Bing Maps, uh, set up an account and get yourself an API key, uh, which is kind of like a de developer key, I suppose. There is uh, information in the wiki how to do it. Uh, I did it. Very easy to do. You really just have to make sure you have a Microsoft account. If you don't, you have to make yourself a Microsoft account. Then you can go to the Bing Maps, go to your account, uh, click on My Keys, and just sort of enter the details that they're asking for, the name of the app you're going to use it for. We're using iNav, so I just entered iNav there. And then you'll end up with a, a personal key that you can plug into Mission Control to bring up the satellite view. Uh, and I'll put links to all of this stuff in the description below. Uh, but having the satellite view is much better because uh, the discrepancy between the drawn map and the satellite view can, can uh, put your rover into puddles and over fences and over roads and things like that if you're not careful. Anyway, lots and lots of fun. Really enjoying iNav Rover. Thanks for watching.